Okay, so now we're going to look at an, uh, an example of the classical method of uh, finding probability. And um, well, what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, um, a family having three children. So this example reads, find the probability that when a couple has three children, they will have at least two boys. Assume that boys and girls are equally likely. That's an important criteria for the classical method. Boys and girls are equally likely, meaning there's a 50-50 chance of having a boy or a girl. And that the gender of any child is not influenced by the gender of any of the preceding children or subsequent children. Um, so that's a very strong assumption to make. Um, but we need that assumption in order to apply the classical method. And in that case, we would have a uh, sample space that would look something like this. We'd have um, the first, second, and third child represented. M would represent a male or a boy, and F would represent a female. So this first row is the probability or is the outcome of having a male for the first child, a male for the second child, and a male for the third child. So this would be the probability, or this would be the outcome of having all boys. And as you notice here, there are eight total outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight outcomes ranging from all boys to all girls. And since having a boy or girl is equally likely, and also since um, the probability of having a certain gender of child on one birth is not affected by what happened on a previous birth or a subsequent birth, all of these eight outcomes are equally likely, meaning each of them has a probability of one eighth. So for instance, the probability of having male, 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 the probability of having all boys is one out of eight because the sample space is size eight. And this is one of those eight equally likely um, outcomes. And for instance, the probability of male, male, female is also equal to one out of eight. OK, so let's take a look at the probability when a couple is having three children that they will have at least two boys. That's the probability that we're looking for. We're looking for the probability of this couple having at least two boys. OK at least two boys. So what we want to do is we want to look at all of the outcomes over here that have at least two boys and make the ratio of that number to eight because there's eight total outcomes. And of those eight total outcomes, the number that fit the criteria of having at least two boys is what we're going to count. So let's see how many of these outcomes have at least two boys. In the first row, I see there are three boys. So the first row fits the criteria of having at least two boys. The second row has two boys also. So that fits the criteria for at least two boys. The third row, two boys also. So that fits the criteria. Now the fourth row, there's only one boy. The oldest is a boy, but the middle and the youngest child are two girls. So that one does not fit the criteria for at least two boys. Let's see here. This the fifth row, that one has at least two male children, two boys. The sixth row, only one boy, the middle child. The seventh row, only one boy, the last child. And the third row, there is no boys at all. There are no boys at all. So therefore, the probability of having at least two boys If you look over here, there are a total of eight possibilities for having three children, eight possibilities for the outcomes. And of those eight possibilities, which would be the denominator of the fraction, three out of those eight would be um, outcomes that are favorable to having at least two boys.